Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the live recording of the question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 11th of September. 2023. So I have got loads of new fabrics to show you. We have had so many new fabrics in the shop over the past couple of weeks. So I have got some of them out to show you tonight that people have requested to see and pattern suggestions to go with them as well. Loads of tips requested and questions asking for different advice on your sewing and dressmaking projects so hopefully lots to learn lots of inspiration to be had you'll see me just read any comments and questions that come in live as well just so you've got a bit of context about what is happening as i chat along and if you are watching here on YouTube and you would like me to answer a question in a future session, then you can leave a comment on this video. You can also email the shop as well. I'll put the email address in the description to this video. So all of the fabrics are available online. Remember, we do ship worldwide as well. And the links to that are in the description too. So I hope you enjoy watching and I'll see you very shortly. Hi everyone, welcome to another live Q&A with me today on Monday the 11th of September. After a couple of weeks break, we're back into normal routine again. So I'm here with you on the shop floor, answering all of your questions and showing you lots of lovely fabrics as well. So um, yeah, the past, so last week was the big sew off event that we were taking part in. So then um, that was like a bit of a different Monday for me. So I couldn't do the normal live on the shop floor. Um, and I actually feel like a year must have passed since last week because so much has happened. <laughs> in the last week. It's been very busy. Um, but yeah, it's good to kind of feel like a little bit more in routine now and hopefully it will continue. Um, there is like maybe a small chance that I might not be able to do the live next week, but I'm working really hard to sort something out. So yeah, hopefully that should be us now. Back to normal Mondays now that um, September and you know, it's back to school and all that. Um, but thank you everyone for joining back in again. It's lovely to see you all and all everybody's familiar names. It's lovely for, thank you for joining everyone. Um, so, so yeah, I have got quite a lot of questions to get through tonight. I've got lots of new fabrics to show you as well. So basically we have had so many new fabrics come in over the past couple of weeks. Like it, it's continuing to be quite overwhelming. And we thought that all of them had arrived. And then <laughs> last Tuesday, um, me and Helen and Becca went to like this uh, sort of like a fabric kind of exhibition like show thing in London and we saw one of our suppliers there and they were like oh yeah we've got your autumn winter fabric delivery ready to come like you know are you wanting it delivered now and we just kind of looked at each other and we're like uh we forgot about that one um, so there is even more new fabrics coming as well um but they they won't be on till um it would be like the tail end of next week really or the week after so so yeah there is time to digest the current new fabrics and now that the this kind of weird sort of heat wave period has passed, it may be a little bit easier to get into thinking, <laughs> thinking about sewing some autumn winter stuff because, you know, remember everybody in the UK, you do live in the UK and the weather will be pretty rubbish soon uh, and probably like kind of cold and wet and all that sort of stuff. And you're gonna need some nice autumn projects to be working on. So I can definitely help you fulfill those requirements uh, with all of the new fabrics that have come. So yeah, I've got some to show you tonight and then I can show you some more next week as well because there's just, it's like too much to show um, just in the live. But yeah, there's loads of things in the Just Arrive section anyway. Um, so, so yeah, I'll try to keep up with any questions as always that are getting asked as I chat along. Um, but as I said, I, do, I think it's because I didn't do one last week. I feel like there's quite a lot of questions for me to go through. Um, so I will get started um, on to them. So what, one of the first questions I wanted to cover, which is linked to the kits that were released last week. Um, so that was the Closet Core Mitchell trousers and the Fiber Mood Josephine dress. So it was two really lovely projects for autumn and the Mitchell trousers were in 100% woolen fabrics, eggs designer, really beautiful. Um, and the kits, I'm really sorry again, everybody who didn't, um, who maybe perhaps missed out, they sold out really quickly again. I just, I, I don't wanna keep like, I don't wanna just sound like a broken record kind of giving the same excuses. I'm sorry that I, 
I'm sorry that they, they sold out so fast and if you didn't get them. Um, but the good news is, is that we do have some fabrics that are like this, exactly the same fabric that we put in the kit but in a different colourway. So because the fabric was X designer, there was like a kind of limit on how much we could get. Like we just got all of the stock that we could get, but then um, the supplier did have some other colorways of the same fabric that, so there wasn't enough in that colorway to make it into a kit. Um, but obviously we can just sell it in the shop. Um, so the first one that I've got to show you is this one here, which is a beautiful, lovely kind of maroony color. And um, this, well, we've called it burgundy. So it's burgundy lightweight wool fabric. And this is the same fabric that the sort of darker forest green Mitchell trousers sample was made out of. Um, so it's a bit more of like a densely woven wool and it's, ni it's nice and soft. It's, you know, it's got a nice amount of sort of drape and flop to it. So you can see how that, that looks up made into the Mitchells. If you go onto the Sewing Society section of the website, you'll see the Mitchell kit there. And then you can see I've made a wide leg version in this sort of tapered one as well. Um, so so yeah we've got that one it's 1950 a meter and then i've got two colorways of the kind of two-tone one so we had like a denim blue and then we had like a maroony one as well and um, so this one is the gray two-tone lightweight wool fabric it's also 100 percent wool um, and it's got a, a bit this one's what's this one did i say gray yeah um this one i would say has got a bit more of a kind of like a little bit of a looser weave to it and it's kind of got two colors in it it's like the fibers that have woven it are two shades so it just has um yeah like a two-tone sort of appearance to it as well but in terms of like thickness and the way it sort of drapes and hangs very similar to the other one and then also in that sort of two-tone effect is this lovely green one here um and you can see that one side is is a bit darker and the other side's kind of like a brighter green so i think you could choose like personal preference what you what you wanted to do so in the samples that i made for the kit i chose like the more colorful side but you could definitely use the other side like if you wanted more subtle color but you wanted them to look a little bit darker and um, so this is the bottle green two-tone lightweight wool fabric so somebody was asking what non-wool fabric would you recommend for the mitchells and I think if you're looking for a really nice uh, smart pair, I'm just looking for it because I brought it out to answer another question. And um, the range of bamboo blended fabrics that we've got that come in lots of colors, I think would look really, really nice. And um, this particular one is the Indigo Bamboo Blended 12 fabric. It's 24.50 a meter. So it's, it's bamboo and recycled polyester with a tiny little bit of spandex, but you still obviously just treat it as a woven. It doesn't need ironed, which is quite good, hence the polyester content. Um, and it's just really lovely and soft and it drapes really nicely. So I would say this is a really nice non-wool alternative if you didn't want woolen ones. Um, and then, then yeah, I'll maybe to, so the Josephine dress, um, that we've got a couple of those ones left, um, but we do have some fabric left over. We've got a waiting list for that at the moment. So if you've seen the the Josephine dress kit and you like the fabric, you can email us and we can add you to the wait list for that. Um, and it should be ready to go online later on this week. We can let you know um, when it's available. Um, but maybe show you that next week. I'm sorry I didn't bring the, the samples of that over. Um, tonight did i miss any other comments here hi everyone and um, we're far and wide again tonight we've got somebody watching in quebec and Lorianne in oregon again hi Lorianne. um okay so yeah so so yeah somebody was asking um asking to see wolves that were similar to ones in the mitchell kits um so then the next question which is like linked to the kits is somebody asked have you thought of splitting the kits into two times to help those who can't make it make 12 newtons so the kits always go on sale at midday uk time on the first wednesday of the month and i have thought about it before several times and at the moment basically i don't have the manpower or resources to be able to launch kits that are not during working hours because a lot of traffic hits the website all at once so i have to have my web developer on call and i have to have somebody manning the phone in the shop i have to have somebody manning the emails the general inquiry emails and then i also myself have to like monitor everything i have like loads of screens open on my my computer to check that everything's running really smoothly and that it's running as it should um, and if I if I release it at a later time and um, then I can't do all of those jobs on my own and um, and because the team are working in the day and I don't 
I basically don't have enough people to like do it at another time. Um, but I know it's I know it is difficult for some people. And I'm really sorry about that. I, it is something that I'm like always looking to try and work on and try and think of sort of different solutions because. Um, yeah, like having so much traffic hit the website at one time does, co co does cause like other problems as well. Um, and I have got some ideas that I think could maybe sort of help with that, which um, hopefully will develop over the coming months. Um, but yeah, it's not something that I can sort of immediately do. I'm really sorry. Um, oh, somebody's in Cape Town. Another farm is pretty tight. Um, somebody's asking, do you have any fabrics for the Marlow cardigan? Yeah, we do have quite a lot actually. Um, one that I'll show you just quite I pulled out for another um another to answer another question. We just actually had these re-delivered again in quite a few colours. We had them last year as well. Um, it's the viscose blended knit fabric. So it's a viscose polyester mix again. This one's the slate blue. Um, but it's like a really nice sort of double-sided fabric. Feels really nice and cosy and soft. It's quite drapey, so it would give more of like a slouchy Marlowe cardigan look. Um, and yeah, it comes in lots of nice colours as well. So it's the it's the if you if you search for viscose blended knit fabric on the website, you'll see all the colours. But it makes a really nice Marlowe. Um, okay, so the next question that was sent in beforehand is can you please show the new Fabric Godmother prints? So they were released on Wednesday, I think, last Wednesday. Um, we don't have all of the new collection, but we do have some of them. Um, again, they're all viscose and there's a new base cloth for a couple of them. So this one here, it's called, um, let me just get the official name. So if you wanted to find it, you can. Um, the Kika Pink and Emerald Viscose Jacquard Fabric. So the Jacquard part of it is referring to the base cloth, the actual base cloth that the print is printed onto. It's kind of got like a pattern woven into it. So you'll see it catching the light differently. Can you see the light reflecting it here? So it's kind of like little flowers that are woven into the fabric. And then you've got the design printed on top of it. So it kind of adds like more texture or depth to the fabric, which is really nice. So it's quite an abstract print, this one. Um, obviously more sort of like blues and greens, which is really nice. It's got a nice thickness. So I don't think you would need to line that necessarily, see if you were making a dress. And then it does come in another colorway as well. Um, so it's more like a sort of pinky colorway with a nice, nice blue in it. Um, this one is the cerise and orange colorway and um, i'll open a bit of it out again so as you, again it's like quite sort of abstract oh, jiggling my tripod there and um, if maybe if you've got like an aut autumnal wedding to go to that'd be a nice one for that um okay so then the other ones that we've got are that one looks like a viscose crepe this one is is black in the background and then it's got these like lines of flowers, which are really nice. They're running parallel to the selvage, but I definitely think this is another one where you could alter the direction of the stripe. So it might be like some of the garment that you make, say with the stripes going horizontally, some are vertically. I think that also looks really cool. Um, so yeah, that's another nice one. Nice and opaque as well. Um, and then this one here, this is a nice bright green one. This would be nice for an autumnal wedding as well. Um, this is the... Bettina floral viscose crepe fabric. So the crepe is just referring to like the type of weave of the fabric and it's it's a bit it's a bit more kind of textured so you can't really see it but up close it's got yeah it's got like a crepey texture so it's just sort of like I don't want to say bumpy because it's not that makes it sound like like more than what it is but yeah it just it kind of reflects the light a little bit differently and um, this sorry the price isn't actually written on it oh that's kind of annoying. Um, sorry that they're not written on. I can't remember off the top of my head what they are. Not It's meant to be on there and it's blank. Uh, but yeah, they're in the just arrived section. So um, you can see how much they are there. Um, and we sell by the 10 centimetre as well. So you can be quite, and the smallest cut is 10 centimetres. Um, so you can be quite specific about how much you need as well, which is quite good, especially when fabrics are a bit more expensive. You don't have to like always round up to the next half metre. Um, and then the final one from the new collection that I've got is this one here, um, which is really lovely. I would say this is black in the background as well. Um, this is the Celeste Black Viscose Crepe Fabric. I feel like the crepe texture on this one is maybe like a bit more pronounced than the crepe texture on the other ones. Um, 
and then the little stars are like a pink and kind of like a goldy color really and um, it's quite abstract all over like you would need to pattern match that or anything which is quite good and i don't think you can see through it either so no lining required there i don't think if you were making a dress which is quite good. so so yeah that's all the new fabric godmother ones and um, and then somebody else is asking to see the autumnal green meadow stretch at viscose poplin which is this one here it is quite heavy oh, so i'll just uh, bring it over so this one is is 97 viscose and it's three percent elastane and it's called poplin just because the weight of it's a little bit heavier um the gsm sorry that, that some of the information is missing from the tag here so i can't read it off the top of my head to you um, but the gsm is just a little bit thicker than like regular plain weave viscose so yeah, just it kind of just feels like a bit more substantial, but it does still have the nice drape. So, you know, if you like sewing with this type of fabric, viscose fabric, but you feel like maybe it's too lightweight for autumn, this is kind of a, like a nice one because it just it just feels like a little bit more substantial. Definitely wouldn't need to line that either. Um, and yeah, lots of nice autumnal colours in that one. Um, I might actually try and prop it up somewhere because I feel like it's still going to quite heavy to put back on the table um okay and then the next one was somebody was asking to see the blue and cream plaid cotton so this one comes in a couple of colorways here this is the blue and cream here and then we've also got this really nice kind of pinky pinky and purpley one as well so the art let me check the composition for you they're 100 percent cotton so they're flannel fabrics that means that one side kind of feels brushed a little bit like it feels kind of fluffy which just, I think the texture of something like that just generally makes it feel cosier, just because it's kind of like fluffy and yeah, you just associate that with being cosy, don't you? Um, so yeah, someone asked to see that, but then I did have another question that was related to this fabric, because somebody was asking if it would be, um, if it would be suitable for the Nina Lee Piccadilly PJs, the pink plaid one, and I think yes is the answer to that. I think it would make lovely PJs. Um, so yes to that one um i think that was the only other question that was related to that um, and then somebody else was also asking to see the petal bloom on gray viscose jersey fabric we've actually had quite a lot of vi printed viscose jerseys in they're really good for like nice wrap dresses the appleton is really nice um and so over it, I've also got some nice jersey dresses as well that it would be good for. The Kilo Wrap dress is another one that's good for viscose jersey. Um, so yeah, we do actually have quite a lot of them. But yes, yeah, somebody was asking to see this one here, which is the Petal Bloom Ombre Viscose Jersey Fabric. It's 11 90 and it's 95 viscose, 5% elastane. So it's because it's viscose jersey, it's very floppy. It's lighter weight. It's really nice and stretchy. It's got quite a high viscose, um, high spandex uh, fiber in it and yeah really nice for a dress um and it also comes in another colorway as well which i think is lovely it's more like a oops that one's falling over it's more like a blue colorway and um, so it's the same print but the background's like navy blue with sort of lighter blue kind of sketches on it um okay somebody's asking would the floral striped fabric be suitable for the ollie a shirt was oh, that the fabric godmother one this one if so yes i think that would be really cool that would be really nice it's a nice, nice, lightweight sort of floppy fabric, which is good for that, that oversized look of the Olia. So yes to that one. Um, okay, so the next question was, um, I didn't actually type it out properly and I slightly lost the context of it. So I was trying to like find it again. Somebody would emailed it in. So they're making the Ikati Rabat, R-A-B-A-T, Gilet. Um, so it was like an adult Gilet pattern. And... Um, I'm intending not to line it, so how would you recommend I finish the bottom edge, turn it up and hem, or bind it? So I think it would depend on what fabric you were using, I think. And I'm sorry if you said what fabric you were using in your question, and I don't I haven't copied that bit of the question onto the page. If you're watching, please feel free to clarify for me. Um, but I would say... Um, you could bind it if you wanted to. It would obviously depend whether you wanted to see the binding or not. Um, if you didn't want to see the binding and like make that a feature, then I would just turn it up and hem it. If it's quite thick and you don't really want to have it like turned and then turned again to hem it, then you could bind the bottom raw edge 
like you know finish it off like that I don't know if I'm explaining that properly. So you kind of just, you, you, know, you don't see the binding from the front, but on the inside you see the binding and that's what finishes off the raw edge. Um, so then that saves you having to like turn it back on itself again if it is quite a bulky fabric. Um, and then the second part of the question, what the other idea I thought was potentially maybe could you face it? Could you face the hem? Um, and then, yeah, the second part of the question was I fancy making another one with some of your gorgeous flannel and wool flannel or wool and lining it what weight wadding would you recommend so that it's cozy but not too puffy we don't really have many waddings but we do have a, it's called warm and natural um, and it's like a cotton wadding and it's quite thin it's very wide because it's meant to be for quilting so i think it's like 2.4 meters wide or something um but you could it, it feels nice and soft it's pre-shrunk um, it's not too spongy, it's quite flat and you could, depending on what sort of thickness you wanted, you could either use one layer of it or you could double up and have two layers, but I think that would look nice if you wanted to do it. Um, okay, I missed a couple of comments here. Please can you help? The Josephine dress is way too long for me, but there isn't a length and shorten line on the pattern. I'm not sure how to shorten it as it's flared. What I would do is draw a line that is at 90 degrees to the fold line. Um, and then you can shorten it from there and then you'll just need to true up the, the side the side edge because you lose sort of some of the shaping there. So then you basically just kind of have to sort of connect the points so that it still comes out nice and smooth at the side. Um, but I would I would reduce the length that way so you've still got your, your shaping at the bottom. Um, I actually did that. You can't, I don't think you can really notice it in the photos, but I actually did that on the, the sort of smaller scale print sample that I made because I hadn't cut enough fabric to make the sample and my skirt pieces weren't fitting on. So I was like, I'm going to have to shorten it by a couple of inches and that's what I did. Um, so yeah, I know that it works that way. Okay, can you recommend any good transitional top patterns noticing a gap? Um, I would suggest that you, you could check out my blouse and shirt. Uh, blog. I've got lots of, and, and I've got a top round, woven top roundup um, one in there as well. So you'll get to see like lots of different, um, lots of different ones there. Hopefully that gives you some inspiration. Um, but I, I think probably like making a transitional top can also be, depending on what fabric you choose as well. Like if you choose a kind of thicker, heavier fabric, um, then that can make something that maybe you would make in the summer, but in like a, a much lighter weight cotton, then sort of feel more transitional. Um, okay. Hi Lauren, I usually make clothes, but I need to make some Roman blinds after a house move. Do you have any suitable fabric, please? I'm really sorry, we don't. We did just to stock a small range of upholstery fabrics, but we just don't have enough space to stock like a decent range. And it kind of, was just sort of seemed a bit pointless and we just really focus on dressmaking fabrics now. So I'm really sorry, I don't have any. Um, but there are lots of places online as well. I actually had to make blinds myself recently. Um, and there, you know, there's lots of places online. I don't, I don't like know any like in particular. I, I used one called Jane Clayton, but that was just because I like Googled something and I found it. But most of them do little swatches. You can order that and then sort of see. Um, Somebody's suggesting Mills shop online. Um, okay, so the next question was anything I need to know before making my first coat? So I was trying to think of sort of general kind of headline advice. And um, first of all, that's really exciting. I'm excited for you. You're gonna love it. Just take your time because there's just more sewing in a coat, especially if it's lined. If you're using wool fabric, then I would suggest that you get a clapper, a wooden pressing clapper. Um, that can make a really big difference to how your coat sort of sits and presses and how the seams look. And then what other things would I suggest? In terms of lining, you want to definitely make sure that the sleeve lining is like slippery lining so that you can get your arm in and out and nice and easily. And you can line the bodice in the same or if you wanted like more funky, nice lining, um, then you could use like a nice cotton lawn for the front and back bodice, but then use the slippery line for the sleeves and then you can still get it on and off really nicely. Um, and then just remember that obviously when you make a coat, it needs to have like extra room because you're probably gonna be wearing like more layers underneath it. 
so if you do make a twelve, for example, I've made a twelve for coats before, just in calico fabric, and you just make the outer. Um, you know, you don't have to make do all the bits or anything. Um, but just make sure that you try it on with like sort of thicker layers underneath, so you can get more of an idea of what it's sort of fitting like. Um, and also also just check that you can say say like you carry a bag over your shoulder or something or maybe you wear a rucksack or whatever check that you can you can do that as well and that you can bend your elbow it's not too tight at the elbow it's another good thing to check um good luck and um, it's very exciting okay the next one was any sewing slash pressing tips for the bubble cord i've never sewn cord before and then also related to that, another question, how is bubble cord different from corduroy? So this is the bubble cord that we have got here. It's kind of like two layers in one because it's got this lovely cozy furry back. And the difference with the bubble cord is, it, I don't think it's got a nap. So normally corduroy has what's called a nap where you like smooth it one way and it feels nice and smooth. And then you brush it the other way and it feels like a bit kind of rougher or it just sort of feels a bit different. But the bubble cord is just, it's almost like a bit more sort of textured. Or can you see, it's just like reflecting the light differently. Whereas plain cord is just, it's a bit more like kind of matte. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have that sort of same kind of depth or texture. Obviously it's quite thick. So it maybe if you've got a walking foot, you could use that. That will really help to like feed the fabric through evenly. In terms of pressing, um, this one is polyester, so it's not going to press, you know, it won't take a crease that well because polyester doesn't tend to do that. Um, so it might be that maybe you just sort of have to like pin it more if you've got fabric clips um, and you're having to hold lots of layers together, the fabric clips might help rather than pinning. Um, so, so yeah, that's something to sort of consider as well. Um, and then also related to the bubble cord, somebody said they were making an Alford jacket and the best way to finish the seams, well, bound seams be too bulky. Um, so I think, I think you probably could bind the seams and I think it would be, it would be okay. The other thing I was actually wondering is because it's, because it's quite fluffy, it's not actually, I mean, I think when you initially cut it, you sort of get some shedding. Actually, I suppose it does kind of free a little bit. I was actually wondering whether you could maybe almost like faux fat, faux, as in pretend, flat fell it, where you just like sew the seam allowance down um, with it, but, but like basically just kind of have it raw. But I don't know, I thought, I thought maybe that would be okay and that after the initial cut, it would stop fraying, but it's kind of fraying a little bit. So maybe I wouldn't actually suggest that. I would say probably bound would be nice or, or overlocker. If you've got an overlocker, you could do that, of course. Um, so, so yeah, but it is a really nice fabric. Okay, somebody's asking, do you have any pattern and fabric suggestions for comfy but smart work trousers? So last autumn, I did like a blog post that's got a video and loads of pattern and fabric suggestions that is all about like fabrics that you can use to make like autumn and winter trousers. Yeah and like different styles and all that sort of stuff. So I would suggest checking that out because it's got lots of different options in it. Um, Cause there, you know, there are lots of really nice ones out there. The Mitchells that I was mentioning in the beginning are, are a, I think they're really smart. I think they're really nice. Um, and yeah, we've got lightweight wools that they work in or the bamboo blended one's another good one for that. Okay, I'm about to start making my first quilt and I need to get some wadding. Is the wadding you mentioned quite warm? Um, I've, I mean, it's cotton, so it's not, I don't know. I probably wouldn't be able to like really comment on its warmth. It's not very lofty, it's quite flat, but that's what I've used to make all my quilts. Um, if, you, if you really wanted something to be warm and like very insulated, then I would suggest getting some, some, a thing called Thinsulate. It's quite a technical fabric, so I don't sell it. Um, I, I used it once to line a Kellyanna rack that I made, um, but it's kind of like wadding, it's quite puffy, um, and that's very warm. So if you're specifically wanting a quilt to be very warm, then I would suggest looking into Thinsulate. Um, 
Okay, and on the same topic, what is the difference between corduroy versus needle cord? Needle cord is just very thin cord. So cord corduroy has what's called a whale count, W-A-L-E, not whale as in the animal. And the whale count refers to how many like lines are within an inch. So the, the, uh, the lower the number, the chunkier they are, and then the higher the number, the thinner the cords are, because that's what's fitting in like an inch measurement. And um, so needle cords is like cords that are basically as thin as a needle, um, hence the needle reference. Um, whereas corduroy is just like a general term for all corduroys that could be any sort of thickness. Um, okay, Merchant and Mills quinch trousers are smart for work. Okay, good suggestion. Cotton wadding is great for quilts. Yeah, that's that's my personal preference also. Um, what is the best fabric to use to line trousers? Even the softest wool can feel a bit scratchy on the skin. Thank you. Um, I would say like, uh, I would say probably like more kind of slippery, like traditional type lining. Try to get one that's viscose if you can, or Benberg because um, that will be a bit more breathable than like an acetate one. Um, that would be my suggestion. Okay, the next questions were tips for sewing pleather, so fake leather. I've got some to make a bag, but I've never sewn with it before. So you're going to need either a Teflon foot, which is usually like something extra that you can buy for your sewing machine, or I have also managed to get away with sewing pleather before by putting scotch tape on the bottom of my sewing foot. Um, because the metal basically sticks to it, the metal of the foot sticks to it, and it doesn't doesn't work, doesn't feed properly. Um, and then also use a microtex needle because they're extra sharp and it just goes through the, the fabric a bit better. Um, okay, the next one, actually a couple that were, I guess, kind of linked, could be linked. How to sew a slippery fabric and then also any tips on sewing with silk. I mean, silk's quite slippery, so I guess it's like kind of the same. Um, you just you need you need extra pins to help control it and um, if it's silk then i would try to get really fine pins or you can get silk specific silk pins as well that are just you know they're much finer more delicate more gentle on the fabric um for for silk i would try to use a, a very fine needle like a 70 potentially even a 60 um and i suppose it's just about working out ways to control the fabric i mean it might feel like basting the fabric first or like hand tacking it makes you feel like you've got more control and um, french seams is a nice finish when you're working with slippery fabric or silk fabric because it's very lightweight and it's easy to do french seams in that you feel very lightweight and um, so that's nice to do as well okay the next one was how easy would it be to make the lusk entire bag smaller i love the design it's too big for me so that was the pattern that um we designed as part of the sewing society kit earlier in the summer so you can get it as a pdf that has a video and everything um so i have seen people make it smaller um so it is definitely doable i haven't actually ever like done it or sort of tested it myself so i don't have any like specific guidelines to tell you maybe that's something i should work out if it's getting requested frequently um but 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 yeah it is it is definitely doable because i've seen people make smaller ones um okay the next question was where do you find your waist in sewing terms um so the waist in sewing terms is i would say it's it's just like the sort of for me it's kind of like at the bottom of my rib cage so it's like sort of up here so this is where i would like measure my own waist basically is like up here now obviously the waist of my trousers is sitting significantly lower than that um but when you're looking at the body chart measurements on a pattern you would measure your waist here like at the you know at the at the, at the smallest parts maybe like typically kind of higher than what you might think because it might be that generally the the waistband on things that you wear is a bit lower um but yeah in terms of like looking at a body chart on a sewing pattern to work out what size you should make then you want to be measuring your waist like up up here yeah the, the kind of natural waistline um so yeah i hope that helps um, okay, the next one was, do you think inseam pockets would work in the LED? That's the closet core pattern. It's like a wrap dress and the skirt's quite A-line. I am going to personally say no to that. I don't think I would do that. Only because I feel like the shape of the skirt... I don't think it would hang properly. And then I think it, you might feel like it adds bulk there when you don't really want it. Um, so my personal feeling is no on that one 
Um, okay, Helen's got a suggestion, remaking a smaller bag. Choose how much smaller you want it to be, e.g. 70% of the original, and then multiply all the dimensions by 0 0.7, and then everything will be scaled down the same. Thank you, Helen, for that little mathematical input. I appreciate it. Um, okay, the next one was sewing with Seraflex thread. So Seraflex is stretchy thread, which is the same as Maraflex thread, um, but they just come from different brands of thread. So Seraflex is from the brand Mettler and Maraflex is from the brand Gutterman, is the Gutterman one that we stock. And it's basically like, it's stretchy thread for sewing stretchy jersey fabric. And it means that you can sew it in your regular sewing machine with a straight stitch, regular straight stitch. And because the thread is stretchy, then the seam line will still stretch, which make, just makes it a little bit quicker and easier. And um, so yeah. Okay, your waist can be where when you bend sideways, you get a crease. Lovely, thank you. Um, okay, the next one was, I often end up with excess fabric in the back bodice when making jumpsuits or dresses. The waist seems fine and the shoulders are fine. The excess fabric is in the middle area above the waist seam. What suggestions would you suggest? So probably it's, I would look into a sway back adjustment and it's probably going to be that you need to take like a wedge out of the back bodice, but kind of like tapering to the side seams because you don't want to take out the whole width of it because then your side seams would shorten. You probably don't want that. It's kind of just like, you know, it's like a section from the center back that then kind of merges out to nothing. So it kind of, yeah, would sort of like do that a little bit. But yeah, if you look into sway back adjustments, then I think that would help you. Um, oh, somebody's saying I found Seraflex broke all the time, but Maraflex doesn't. Um, interesting. I've never actually tried Seraflex before. I've only tried Maraflex and I found it totally fine. Um, what is Orafil thread for, please? Um, as far as I know, somebody will probably be able to correct me here. Um, Orafil is just like another brand of thread. So I think they probably do lots of different types of thread. Um, it'll be for lots of different things. I agree, I found Maraflex much better. Interesting, I've not heard of that before. Okay, good to know, good to know. Um, oh, there's another one in the bubble cord now. I should have answered that before. Um, any pattern recommendations for the bubble cord? I think that the Alford is probably a pop popular one. It's just like a sort of shacket style, but um, uh, you know, I think it would be nice for a shacket. I think Style Arc have got one. Is it called the Logan? I can't remember. <laughs> a lot of people asked me about shackets last um, autumn as well, and that's coming to mind. Um, or like a gilet would be nice as well um, for the bubble cord. Okay, the next one was recommended black denim for the ginger jeans and fabric for a smarter pair. So the black denim that we've got that would be suitable for the ginger jeans is the 11 ounce stretch denim, which is this one here. Um, and this is this is, this is is it, it's black denim. We have it like sewn up into a little sample just because it comes into the shop on these really big rolls. So it just helps people sort of see what it looks like kind of made up. Um, so yeah, it's the 11 ounce stretch denim fabric. It's 15, 70 a meter, it's caught 70 cotton, 28 polyester, two spandex. And then fabric for a smarter pair. So my other suggestion is the stretch needle cord that we've got here. And this, this is a beautiful kind of teal color. It's peacock stretch cotton needle cord fabric. It's 15, 60, it's 96 cotton, four elastane. And I have made the gingers out of exactly the same fabric, but in a pink color way. And I love them. They're like one of my most favorite trousers that I've ever made. I've kind of worn them out actually, to be honest. Um, and I think it's like a nice alternative for the gingers if you don't want to use denim. Um, okay, the next one was, I'd like to make a warm Lahaja dressing gown. Fabric suggestions, please. So I was actually thinking that, I know the Lahaja is meant for woven fabrics, but I actually think it would be really nice in that this Fisco Splendid one that I was showing you in the beginning. I mean, it would kind of look like a cross between a sort of oversized cardigan and that you're just wearing a blanket. But I feel that would be a good thing. Um, so it's obviously not gonna be like your, your way out of the shower and you put your dressing gown on. It's gonna be more like you got your PJs on and you want something really cozy to like bundle and wrap around yourself. And I actually think that would work really nicely. And it, we've got it in all those really nice colors now. So it's the Visco Splendid Knit Fabric. 
And then the other one that I thought, because I was in that zone of like cozy fabrics, is we've had this new range come in as well. Um, so we've got it in quite a few colours. This particular one is the Plum Alpine Fur Backed Sweatshirting Fabric. It's 13.50 a metre, 67 cotton, 30 polyester, 3 elastane. So on one side, it looks like a sweatshirting fabric, basically. And on the other side, it's got this beautiful kind of lush fur. It feels very cozy indeed. Um, so again, it's like two fabrics bound together, basically. And it does come in quite a lot of colourways as well. So I thought that that would feel really nice and cozy too. Um, is there a way to make the pockets and the gingers at the front faux pockets as I never put anything in them and, and sometimes find them annoying? Yes, all you would need to do is get that little like facing bit that you put onto the lining and finish off the bottom edge and then like literally just kind of pin it onto the, um, on, oh no, you need to finish off the, you would still need to, what would you do? You would, you would, I would, right, this is what I would do. I would sew a line of guide stitching where the seam allowance is on the, the actual front leg of where like the pocket would be. And then I would clip into it and then I would press it, finish it off and then press it to the, the wrong side of the fabric. And then get your little sort of facing bit that goes in the top corner, finish off the bottom edge of that. And then I would like just put that on so they're both sort of facing up the way and then basically just top stitch it down. So you're kind of top stitching them together. So it'll still look like there's a pocket, but there's not actually a pocket. Um, okay, I had the same issue with Seraflex. It broke all the time and I got really frustrated. Jeez, I'm sorry guys that you got, that you got stuck with the Seraflex. This sounds so annoying. Stick with the Maraflex. This is the lesson here. Um, oh, I love the fluffy back fabric. Is there a black in it? Oh, unconfirmed. <laughs> I don't know because there's so many new fabrics that I don't actually know where all the colorways are of <laughs> the different fabrics. Quite possibly. Um, and if we don't have one, it might actually be that we can get one. Um, so I will watch out for that. Um, okay, so the next one was, my eight-year-old wants to start sewing. Are there any patterns you'd recommend? I don't actually know any like specific patterns that are like designated specifically for children to sew. What I would suggest, I suppose it depends on what you feel like your own skills are and if you're kind of if you, I, obviously I don't know anything about you, um, you know, if you're able to like really help her or if you were kind of looking for something that she could just sort of get on with herself. Um, but I have a seven year old <laughs> and she does like to do some sewing projects as well. And I said to her, what would you, what, the ladies asked this question, what what would you think you, she, you would say? Um, and so my daughter has made, just like using little scraps of fabric, she made a patchwork cushion. So she literally had just like bits of fabric and she chose them and she sewed them all, sewed them all together and did, then just made like an envelope cushion cover and she loved it. Then we did kind of like a similar thing with a bag. So basically it was just like the front of a little kind of tote bag, book bag thing, just patches of fabric and then we sewed a handle on it and then she progressed to actually making a quilt because she liked doing that it wasn't massive it was maybe like a meter by a meter or something and um, and she just sewed together all the little squares of fabric and she really liked that and um, but if it was actually maybe clothes that, you, that she wanted to make and um, then just something like a kind of like a, an elasticated sort of gathered skirt is, is quite nice because it's just like a, a rectangle of fabric and you make a channel and put the elastic through and it's, it's quite easy and um, simple shaped cuddly toys are also popular so she wanted to do a, a birthday like a sewing birthday party last year and we did these it was just like two two squares of um two little squares of cotton fabric and you sew them together sew the three sides and then on the put stuffing in it and then kind of squish the other side that's open so it makes like a 3d shape and then you have like a beak coming out the corner and some chicken here at the top and it's like this mini chicken little toy i mean it sounds totally ridiculous but the kids love it and um, so like little kind of cuddly toy things are quite popular as well and um, so yeah Okay, the next one was the best linen for a girl's baby dress and a matching boy's tie. Um, I was thinking for this one, um, I think that this one would be nice, but it's actually a cotton, 
wait a minute, I'm reading the wrong tag. It's actually a cotton linen. Um, it's, the, it's the soft indigo pinstripe linen cotton fabric. It's 13 90 meters. It comes in a few colorways as well. And that's actually what we use to make that little girl's dress there. It looks really cute. Um, and then the other one that I think would feel like nice and soft is the Serona linen as well. It comes in quite a few different colors. It's quite lightweight and yeah, it's just really nice and soft and it's really nice and comfy to wear as well. Um, so yeah, it, it is just plain, but then maybe you could put like little embroidery bits on it or something to sort of make it fancier. Um, okay, the next one was fabric for the new Fiber Mood Saroya. I'm probably not saying that right, jumper. Basically, it's like quite an oversized jumper. It's got a turtleneck, quite a loose turtleneck. And then it's got these channels that are come up one side with drawstrings in them and you sort of pull on them. So it rushes it all up. Um, and it, yeah, it's quite cool. Um, so my top pick for that would be, because I think you want something that's going to be like a bit slouchy um, and kind of be able to take all those gathers and everything. So this particular one is the marine blue colorway, but the fabric that I think would work really nicely is the loop back jersey fabric. So it's 95% medal, it's 5% elastane, it's 18 pounds a meter. So on the reverse, it's like a loop back. So it's got all the little loops, but it's really nice and soft. It's quite drapey. It washes beautifully. It's very comfortable to wear. And I think in that sort of oversized style with the kind of ruched thing, it would look really nice. And it comes in lots of colorways as well. So if you just look up for loop back jersey fabric on the website, then you'll see all the different colors. Um, okay, let's see. The next one, fabric for the Nina Lee Piccadilly PJs. Pretty greens would be a nice option. I think cotton lawn's a nice option for that pattern for the PJs. Um, I've got this one here, which is a nice cotton lawn. This is the Lily Pad Floral Lagoon Pima Cotton Lawn. It's 1360 a meter and it's got some nice sort of greeny blue colorways in it as well. It's lovely. It feels nice and soft. Very luxurious pajamas. Um, okay, the next one was recommendations for smart fabric for the Vicky Sews Jacqueline trousers. They're nice smart trousers. If the person watching earlier who wanted smart trousers is still watching. I think they would look amazing in that blended bamboo that I showed you earlier. This one, this is the indigo colorway. Um, I think that looking at the, the sort of technical drawing and model pictures of that, I think that would be a lovely combination. Um, okay, the next one was fabric and lining for the Heather blazer. I don't know where to start. So I think, if you don't know where to start, I think you should try and ask yourself what season you want to wear it in because the Heather blazer can be made in loads and loads of different things. I've seen so many different versions and actually the two retreats that we have done over the summer, somebody's made a Heather blazer in both of them. So the first one was in, I'm pretty sure that was a viscose linen interface the whole thing to give it more stability um so that was and it was like it was one of the fabric godmother ones so it was that it was you know it was really colorful and it was bright and that was obviously very summery um and then i think she just lined it in a cotton lawn um because it was more of like a summery version and then and the retreat just gone hannah hi if you're watching um she was making a really lovely version in what i think was i don't think i actually asked her but it looked to me like a sort of stretched cotton setting um and again, interfaced all over to give it more stability. So that definitely had like a smarter look, um, but still like quite lightweight, like not too thick and heavy. Um, and then it, she was lining that in a, a Liberty. So again, a cotton lawn, cotton tan lawn. Um, but then the other option is, is that you use some kind of wool fabric. So then it's like a bit more wintry. So I think that, you know, like you could use the wools that I was, I was showing in the beginning, which are the same type that we used for the um Mitchell trousers and you could line it in something that's more like a kind of typical sort of like a slippery lining fabric you maybe imagine if you were you know imagining a sort of more kind of wintry slippery fabric so we've got this one here and um, we've got we've just had quite a few new linings in actually um for the season this one is the bottle green floral box viscose lining fabric it's got a little sort of um kind of flower on it which is quite nice um so so yeah you could line it with that and yeah so it's instead of instead of it being like a more summery lighter weight version and um, where the outer is made out of cotton or linen or something and then it's just lined with cotton this would be like a more wintry one with wool and then that sort of slippery lining where you're maybe you know maybe wearing over like a car to get her a jumper or something and um, so then you need that slipperiness to get it on and off quite easily okay the next one was um 
winter weight trouser material washable and no lining required sorry to be like a broken record i'm afraid i'm referring you back to that bamboo blended fabric again it's really nice and soft and you don't need to iron it you definitely don't need to line it because it feels so nice and soft it's, it is a really good one um okay the next one what well, i've only got a couple left so if anyone does have any other questions let me know now okay fabric for the paper theory lb pullover in warm autumn colors so this this is like a sort of just like a pull on sweater style but it's actually designed to be used with low stretch fabrics or um or not or wovens um so it's very very versatile um but i did pick out a few sort of autumnal ones in the woven department i thought this would be nice it's a cotton a cotton flannel um, Robert Kaufman Redwood Shetland flannel cotton fabric is 20 30 a meter and again because it's flannel and brushed I think it feels nice and cozy quite an autumnal color as well and then in the sort of the in the more kind of stretchier department is this one here which I thought was quite autumnal too terracotta foliage French terry fabric at 16 80 a meter and I thought both of these colorways were quite autumnal um, so I think that would be nice as well. Um, you could, yeah, you can just use so many different things for that pattern. So it's, it's very versatile. Like if you wanted something that was more kind of slouchier and had like a bit more kind of drape or sort of floppiness to it, then that look back jersey that I was showing earlier, I think that would be nice for it as well. Um, and that would, you know, feel really comfy and yeah, nice and stretchy. Um, Okay, and then the last one was, can you show the dark blue 11.7 ounce rigid denim and could you use it for the sew over at Frankie? So this is it here. Again, I've got in the little jean sample just because the roll is so massive and like a bit unwieldy. Um, but yeah, that's it there. And yeah, I think it would be nice for the, for the sew over at Frankie. It's a, it's a, it's a jacket. Um, which has like patch pockets at the front and like a cute little rounded collar and it's lined as well. Um, so yeah, I think that would be nice. Um, okay, so what else have I missed here? Well, the navy scattered floral from this month's sewing society kit be available. So we do have a little bit of it left. We've got a wait list for it just now. So if you email info at guthrie-ganny.co.uk then we can add you to the wait list for that. Um, meant to ask your lightweight wool fabric is it machine washable so the ones that I showed you that are the same ones that are the ones in the kit I did do quite a lot of like testing and machine washing it and um, because it's eggs designer fabric and it doesn't come with any like official washing instructions from the supplier so so yeah I just sort of machine washed some kind of saw what wanted to see what would happen and um, so I washed it on a wool cycle at 20 degrees and I did an 800 spin and I think I rinsed it tw I think I rinsed it twice and that was like the, the settings that I put my machine at and I just used like a, a wool detergent like a liquid wool detergent and they did shrink so the one that was two-tone and um, it shrunk more so I measured a 50 centimeter section and I had to wash it four times before it stopped shrinking and it shrunk to 47 centimeters i think um or was it 46 one of those two it's in the video that comes with the kit which you can get as a separate thing as well um and then the other one which is in the maroon which is the burgundy lightweight wool fabric that was the the darker green one in the mitchell kit that i washed that twice and then it stopped shrinking and it shrunk my 50 centimeter section shrunk to 49 so it didn't shrink as much because it's a denser weave and um, so it does when you wash wool it does change the texture of it a little bit because it brings the fibers closer together because that's what happens when you put soap and water together with wool and um, so you can machine wash it but i wouldn't recommend doing it all the time generally like wool is quite a quite a clever fabric because it's like naturally kind of like antibacterial and it just you know you just need to sort of spot clean it and you can air it out and it doesn't it doesn't really like hold smells or anything like synthetic fibers do or like mixed fabrics do um so so yeah you can machine wash it but it does change it so you just have to be be aware of that um did you manage to read my email re possible large bottom adjustment Ah, yeah, I did. Sorry, that's not in my list. Yeah, you sent me that one as a direct message. I think, so this was this was a question about a dress that, 
it was the it was the fabric godmother godmother peony wasn't it and you felt like it um you felt like the the hem was rising up at the back and you were asking about doing a a full full bottom adjustment on it yeah i think i think that could work obviously you want to change the side seams you just want to add length like over that or you could basically just add like a wedge to the bottom as well so kind of almost be like you're making the bottom hem more curved because you want to add more depth like in the center back and then merge it out to the sides and um, so yeah i think that could work obviously if you've already made one then your only option really is is to kind of like shorten everything else to sort of level it out um but yeah i, th I think your idea would work can i see the light blue medal french terry please i think it's called periwinkle i'd have to I'd ha if you send me a direct message, I'll try and find it in the shop and send you like a little video clip of it because I don't know where it is at this moment in time. Um, I don't have it like nearby me, sorry. Um, I'm late, sorry, did you say what pattern your top was? I didn't actually, you're probably sick of seeing this one. <laughs> it's the Fibre Mood Norma blouse, but I made the sleeves two inches longer and the bodice five centimetre, five inches longer. Um, so yeah, Fibre Mood Norma blouse is what it is. Um, okay, lovely. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Lovely to chat to you all, as always. Um, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and that you have a really good week. And yeah, I'm like 95% sure it'll be here next week. I just need to potentially sort out a few things. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll just kind of be us back into a routine again after summer and then so off events and all that kind of thing. Um, would the Josephine dress be okay for washed linen or better in viscose? Um, I personally think it would look better in viscose, but if it was quite a lightweight washed linen, then sure. I think it, 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 I think it would still work. You could still do it. Give it a try. I think it would probably just hang a bit better in viscose. That's my own personal opinion. Though. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Thanks for your thanks, everybody. And I'll see you very soon. <laughs> Bye.